Hello and welcome to Notebase, the series where I show you how to make procedural materials and geometry notes based on your guys' requests. And since this is the first video, we're just going to do something I've already made. So we are going to make this metal. As you can tell, I'm a little sick, but, but this shouldn't impact the rest of the video. Uh, so just so you know, I sound a little different because I'm sick. So in Blender, we are just going to delete everything. We're pressing A, X and delete. And then with Shift A, we can add in a cube. We want to use a cube since we are going to add in a scratch mask along the edges. So we need edges to do that, of course. And we can just go over here and select the shader editor and click new. And this will make a new material. We can call this just a metal. Just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it and zoom into our nodes. So the first thing I kind of want to do is make a scratch mask. So not the edge mask, but the scratch mask, which we are just going to be using a noise texture for. If you go over to edit preferences and add-ons and search for node wrangler, you should just enable this and you can follow along really easily with me. If you press control shift and left mouse button, and go over to the material preview, uh, switch this to cycles so it looks a little bit better. And of course, uh, just disable the scene world so we get the built-in HDRI for lighting, as you can see here. But if we press Control Shift and left mouse button on the noise texture, it looks kind of like this. And we can just change this to 4D so we have a seed value to work with. I always like this because sometimes you don't get a nice seed and you just want to change it. Uh, with Control T, we can add in a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And we're just going to set this to object. So it's just uh, based on the world position instead of the generated coordinates. We're just going to crank up the detail to 15. As you can see, it adds a little bit of detail and the roughness up to one. So it's kind of like a noise texture. You could use this as a film grain or something as an overlay if you want. But uh, for us, we're just going to set the distortion to two. So we get these big swooshes in the middle. If we set the scaling to one, it might be a little bit better to see. There's a big swoosh right there and right there. And these will just be our scratches. With a math node, we can see this a little bit better. So just add in a math node and set this to greater than, which will filter out anything below this threshold. So everything below 0.5 value will be black and everything above will be white. There's really no need to clamp this, I think, but you could do it if you want. I'm just going to leave it on. So as you can see, this is kind of a scratch mask. It looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you want, you could maybe up the distortion a little bit or change the detail or anything you might want to do. But this is essentially the scratches. We could add in a U saturation and value node and just place it right here. And then we can use this color as the base color for a principal PSDF. So now it will just be rendered normally. And I'm just going to set this value to the factor. And then we can set the color to whatever we want. Something, something like this maybe. Nice yellowish color. And then if we set this value to zero, everywhere where this greater than value is zero, the factor will be zero as well, which means that it doesn't apply any of the, the use saturation or value. But everywhere where it's white, it will be set to one, which means it applies the value. So as you can see, everywhere where this greater than value is white, like here, this will be black since the value is set to zero at that point. This already looks pretty cool as I scratched the metal, but it doesn't really, but it doesn't really represent the real life properties of metal. So what we can do as well is just make a roughness and metallic mask. So basically everywhere where it's scratched, we want it to be uh, less metallic since it will be stripped there. So what we can do with that is just add in a map range node and just plug this greater than value in to the value. And if we preview this, it will just be the exact same. But if we change this to min to one and it's still max to zero, it will basically flip the, flip the values. So if we preview this, you can see the values are flipped. What this basically does is it takes the uh, zero value, for, so the minimum, which is black, and it will project it to the white value. 
it's basically the same as a color ramp as you can see here so this will be the from min and this will be the from max and what it will do if you change this to one to zero it will grab this and set it to one zero and the other one to one and just project it like this with the benefit of being able to change this uh, with a value so it's just uh, a more control color ramp we can set this to the metallic and just preview it and as you can see it will change the metallic values where we want it if you want you could add in a, another math node and set this to subtract and then you can change how metallic the material will be in my example i've set it to 0 0.065 since i think that looks the best something else we can do with the greater than value is just set this to a math node with add and then just add this to the roughness and then we can set this to something like 0.2 and just make it a little bit more uh, metallic and less rough at the parts where the metal is still there instead of scratched as you can see right here which looks really cool in my opinion make sure to save your blend file so you don't lose it and you can also just hit this little shield so it doesn't disappear if you don't have it applied to any objects the last thing we can do for this uh, principled bsdf is add in a normal map or a bump map and then just set this to the normal and input the greater than value to the height and as we can see everywhere where it's stripped will be uh, elevated and we don't really want that since it will be scratched so it will be indented so we need to invert this so the metal is the part that's the highest which adds a lot of realism if you are viewing from an angle and this is pretty much just the metal part so now we're just going to go over the aesthetic parts which are the edge masks and the extra wear and tear and some dirt and things like that as you can see from this angle it looks really nice since you can see all the scratches and that's it for this principle bscf so we can hit ctrl j and just make this a panel which we can move really easily so just move it up there and now we'll be going over the the dirt mask the dirt and edge wear masks so first things first we need to duplicate this principal pscf and just unlink it from the group and we can just place it somewhere here and preview it and we are pretty much just doing a really easy uh, dirt mask so we can add in a musgrave texture set this to 4d set the detail to 15 the dimension to something really small like 0.1 and that's pretty much it we can add in a mapping node and just change this to ob object as well and if we preview this we can see we have a really nice dirt mask we can use uh, but dirt is of of course always on the bottom more than the top so we need a gradient and what we can do is just grab this generated value and separate by xyz so we have three gradients in different directions and we can use the Z direction to add some dirt at the bottom. So pressing Control, Shift and right mouse button, we can click and drag over to the Musgrave and separate X, Y, Z. And if we release, it will add in a mix node. We can preview this and just make sure this is in the Z value. And with the factor, we can change how much dirt is on the bottom and how much is overall on the object. So set this to something like 0.3 or something you want you can change this value later and this looks like a really nice dirt mask we can then just add in another bump map and get the result to the height and the normal to the normal and if we preview this this will add a really nice bump map this almost looks like a stucco wall which is really cool you can use that as well so a bonus material for you and then we can just uh, get the uh, color we got from here probably and just place that in the normal color here so to do that we are just going to make a group so select everything except for the group output press ctrl g and then we can just go over here get the color and just drag it over to the group input and get the same color to our color right here 
And then what we're going to do is just add in a use saturation value node. Set this value to 0.1 or 0 0.05 or something. So it's really dark, but it is still the same color technically. Get the saturation to 0.5. So it kind of mimics uh, the color beneath it, but it's really dark. And this is pretty much it for the dirt. Uh, we can just mask it. So if we just select everything, place it a little bit closer to our other material, we can just mix these two together with Control Shift and right mouse button. And this will add a mix shader node. And then in the factor, we can grab the mix result here. And that will be our dirt. Uh, make sure to flip this. As you can see, a lot more dirt at the bottom and a lot less at the top. If you want, you could probably invert this so it sticks out the dirt instead of sticking in, which is a lot more realistic. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can change the scale here as well. So you have bigger parts of dirt. And I think this looks really cool. So now we've uh, added some realism with the bottom beak more, more dirty. Uh, but now we need to add some scratches to the sides. A really simple way to do that is just to add in a bevel node. And just preview this. As you can see, this kind of creates a normal bevel instead of the uh, modifier bevel, uh, like here. And it basically does the same thing, except it keeps the geometry. So what we can do is just uh, duplicate this bevel node, set these samples to 2, and these ones to something like 10, so you have a lot of detail. Set the radius of the 2 one to 0, so it doesn't add a bevel. And then just add a little bit of, of radius, just a really tiny bit. And what we can do then is just add in a factor math node, and set this to something like dot product and grab this one preview it and if we now change this radius to something manageable you can see an edge mask appear uh, to kind of make this a little bit better to see we can add an add node or a math node and set this to less than and then just get something like 0.75 so you can see the edges so you get something like this if you've already added a bevel, it doesn't really work that well. Since it basically works like the normal bevel node, you can't really bevel a bevel. But with this, we can just uh, mix this with the metal material. And I always like to mix this with a noise texture. So control shift and right mouse button, we can just grab these or just uh, get a mix uh, color. So set this to color and just grab this greater than value. So it doesn't mess up all the connections. If we preview this, uh, we could probably set this to the factor and this to black. Oh no, other way around. Yeah, like this. As you can see, we get uh, scratches along the edge. And this is just a little bit more realistic than just having a perfect edge uh, mask. So that's really cool. We can use this as the mask for our metal. So the bare metal uh, material instead of just the painted metal. We can add in a principal PSDF again and just make this really simple. So something like white, uh, set the metallic to one and the roughness to something like 0.1. And that's pretty much it. We can just add in another mix node, mix shader node, and just mix these two together with this factor. And as you can see, we have a really nice uh, edge mask with scratches. And you can change the radius of this by just changing the radius here. We can add it in a camera and just Alt-G and Alt-R and just move this to a 45 degree angle. So it can look at the, so it can really nicely look at the corner and get a general idea of how the material will look. So like this. As you can see, we have these nice little edges and then the scratches. We could probably also just change the uh, color here on the scratches. So with the value, just make this a little bit lighter, but not too light. 0.2 and saturation to 0.5. So make it white. And that's pretty much it. 
uh, we can just finish up by just um, dragging in all the inputs we want and then just cleaning up this a little bit. Uh, so I'll do that and I'll come right back to you. So this is it cleaned up. We can see our material here and we can change the value too. So we can see our metal here, really nice with scratches and some dirt and this looks really cool. And then I've just made all the connections straight so I know how to follow them. And if we press tab, we can just see this uh, material, this metal right here. So we can change the seed, you can change the scaling, you can change the metallic and the roughness of course we can change everything we want just play with the values in here and then you know how to name them and what they do and it's really fun to make materials like this so this will be available on my comrades under the monthly support you can download it there and play with it it's only two bucks a month it really supports me and please leave a comment with what you want to see next in the following video uh, either geometry notes or the shader editor and I'd love to make that for you. Eventually I want to make a big library with materials you could use yourself and I hope we can do that together. So that's it, uh, leave a like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to join the discord. Goodbye.